Hey guys, Jeffrey Leon. Welcome to this edition of Satan's Strategic Command, dedicated to the advancement of Christian theology, explicating the mark of the beast. May God bless the reading of his holy word. I've titled this discussion that we're having today, guys, Sexual and Monetary Control Upon Pain of Death, a Satanic Summons Residents Within the Image to the Beast. Let's get right into this. We've been discussing the parallelism of Revelation 17, 3 and 4 and Revelation chapter 13, verses 15 through 17. And we're going to go over this again today and I'm going to add a little bit more information that I did not touch on in the previous two discussions that we've had here. So let's go ahead and read Revelation chapter 17 verse 3 and 4 Or how about let's read the whole passage, Revelation 17, 1 through 6. And there came one of the seven angels, which had the seven vials, and talked with me, saying unto me, Come hither, I will shew unto thee the judgment of the great whore that sitteth upon many waters, with whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication, and the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of her fornication. So he carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness, and I saw a woman sit upon a scholar-colored beast, full of names of blasphemy, having seven heads and ten horns. And the woman was a and purple and scarlet color and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls having a golden cup in her hand full of abominations and filthiness of her fornication and upon her forehead was a name written mystery Babylon the great the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth and I saw the woman drunken with the blood of the saints and with the blood of the martyrs of Jesus and when I saw her I wondered with great admiration and let's read Revelation chapter 13, verses 15 through 17. And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak, and cause that as many would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. And he causeth all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads, and that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. The parallelism of Revelation chapter 17, 3 with Revelation chapter 13, verse 15, as the beast, as it appears, that appears in Revelation 17, 3, and I saw a woman sit upon a scarlet colored beast full of names of blasphemy, having seven heads and ten horns. We have identified as a civil power in conjunction with its ten horns that are identified in Revelation chapter 17 verse 12 as 10 kings and a special note here the beast and the harlot that appear in Revelation chapter 17 verse 3 and 4 and idealistically in Revelation chapter 13 verse 15 through 17 the beast and the harlot spiritually comprise holistically the perfect union of Satan's presence upon earth So, there need to, I really don't need to add anything else to that. So, um, let me read that again. The beast and the harlot spiritually comprise holistically the perfect union of Satan's presence upon earth. And that's, the union is depicted in Revelation chapter 17, 3 and 4. Uh, and ideologically, it's enumerated in Revelation chapter 13, verses 15 through 17. So the parallelism of Revelation 17, 3, and I saw a woman sit upon a scarlet color beast with Revelation 13, 15, and he had power to give life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and would cause that as many would not worship the image to the beast should be killed. The parallelism of Revelation 17, 3 with Revelation 13, 15, as the beast that appears in Revelation 17.3, we have identified as a civil power in conjunction with its ten horns that are identified in Revelation chapter 17 verse 12 as ten kings. The image to the beast that appears in Revelation chapter 13 verse 15 in its perfect and its perfection as it appears in Revelation chapter 17.3 as the names of blasphemy is depicted as the beast 
with seven heads and ten horns and the full manifestation of its numbers and operational capacity. Let me say that again. The image of the beast that appears in Revelation chapter 13, 15, in its perfect and its perfection, as it appears in Revelation chapter 17, 3, as the names of blasphemy is depicted as the beast with seven heads and ten horns in the full manifestation of its numbers and operational capacity. And I saw a woman sit upon a scholar colored beast full of names of blasphemy. I personally believe that this is a reference to the image of the beast. This is the image to the beast is the ambassador bearing the seal of Satan. It's the singular manifestation of the beast that is in its plurality as the image to the beast. The image of the beast in its plurality is the beast. It's the full manifestation of the presence, purpose, and power of the spirit of Antichrist revealed to all flesh. So, the image of the beast that appears in Revelation 13, 15 and its perfection as it appears in Revelation 17, 3 as the names of blasphemy is depic depicted and that's, and that's depicted because it, it was a word picture. Remember, it was a word picture given to John and it's, it's a depiction that's open to interpretation. It's not enumerated and explicated uh, with a, a voluminous amount of paragraphs, it's a word picture, and it's given, and it's, and they say if a picture's worth a thousand words, this one is worth billions of souls, and it has a humongous amount of information contained therein for those that want to walk with Jesus Christ and manifest growth, Christian growth, and character development in the kingdom of God by the gospel of Jesus Christ. So, the image of the beast that appears in Revelation 13, 15 and its perfection as it appears in Revelation 17, 3 and I saw a woman sit upon a scholar colored beast full of names of blasphemy as the names of blasphemy is depicted as the beast with seven heads and ten horns and the full manifestation of its numbers and operational capacity. Revelation 13, 15 and he had power to give life unto the image of the beast that the image of the beast should both speak and would cause it as many would not work that the image of the beast should be killed. Revelation chapter 13, 15. That, Revelation 17, 3 is the full numbers and operational capacity of the beast as, it, of, as of the image to the beast as it appears in Revelation chapter 13, verse 15. The image to the beast pours out the spirit of Antichrist upon all flesh. Revelation chapter 14, verse verses 9 and 10. We've discussed it detail in numerous lessons. As the ambassador bearing the seal of as the ambassador bearing the seal of Satan, soliciting the worship of death to reap a harvest of souls in the kingdom of hell. Romans chapter 3, verse 13. The seal of Satan being the author and I this is this is what I wrote here in in what I personally believe the seal of Satan and the seat of Satan being for us fallible and mortal human beings. The seal of Satan being the authorized summons of the beast exercised by civil power to execute the death sentence upon all souls whom refuse to worship the beast as sexual and monetary control is de demanded upon all flesh by the imaged to the beast. John 8, 44, you are your father, father the devil, and the less your father you will do. He was a murderer from the beginning, and not a truth, because there's no truth in him. And when he speaketh of a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. He is a murderer to fulfill all his lusts as it pertains to a man. The seal of Satan being the authorized summons of the beast in Revelation chapter 17, 3, exercised by civil power to execute the death sentence upon all souls whom refuse to worship the beast as sexual and monetary control is demanded upon all flesh by the image to the beast. John 8, 44. The seat of Satan being the final resting place of all lost souls as they are arrayed in the fullness of their numbers and operational capacity, having the mark of the beast resident in suspended animation, petitioning the appearance of their king, Antichrist, Revelation chapter 17, verse 1 through 6. The harlot that appears in Revelation chapter 17, verse 4. And the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet color and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls, having a golden cup in her hand full of abominations and filthiness of her fornication. Is 
the harlot that appears in Revelation chapter 17 verse 4 is the fullness of satanic occupation in its operational capacity cloaked by the fraudulent manifestation of righteousness and the fullness of its numbers arrayed in their final seat in the kingdom of hell. Ezekiel chapter 29 verse 1 through 4 and Revelation chapter 13 verse 16 and 17. Fulfilling their predestination as these souls perfect their union as children of Satan in an illicit relationship with the image to the beast. Let me read that again. The harlot that appears in Revelation 17, 4 is the fullness of satanic occupation in its operational capacity, cloaked by the fraudulent manifestation of righteousness and the fullness of its numbers arrayed in their final seat in the kingdom of hell. Ezekiel 29, verse 1 through 4, Revelation 13, verse 16 and 17. Fulfilling their predestination as these souls perfect their union as children of Satan in an illicit relationship with the image of to the beast. Judgment by Holy Father God requisite in fulfillment of this union with the beast, the civil power, enforcer, enforcer of the worship of death, and the harlot, the ecclesiastical power, to manifest upon earth the fullness of its numbers and operational capacity, the kingdom of hell, residing in suspended anima animation, revealed and concealed, respectively, the manifest presence of Antichrist. Revelation chapter 13, verse 18. Let me read that again. Judgment by Holy Father God, requisite in fulfillment of this union with the beast, the civil power, and the enforcer of the worship of death, and the harlot, the ecclesiastical power, to manifest upon earth the fullness of its numbers and operational capacity, the kingdom of hell, residing in suspended animation, revealed and concealed, respectively, the manifest presence of Antichrist. Revelation chapter 13, verse 18. Revelation chapter 13, verse 15 through 17. Being the constitution of Satan, sealed within the soul of the image to the beast in its highest operational capacity. And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and would cause that as many would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. And he causeth all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their forehead, and that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the name, the name of the beast, Wait, wait, see that, save that he that had the name. Well, oh my goodness, okay, I'm on the spot here. And that no man might buy or sell, save, the, save he that had the mark, excuse me, or the name of the beast, or the number of his name. So Revelation 13, 15 through 17, being the constitution of Satan, sealed within the soul of the image to the beast in its highest operational capacity. And of course, guys, I just want to say here, we know that the beast is Satan as, dead, as manifest by Revelation chapter 12, verses 7 through 9. It's the dragon and Revelation 13, 18. Here is wisdom. Let him that hath the number, him that hath wisdom count. Wait, here is wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast for it is a number of a man and his number is 603 score and six so by this by Revelation 13 18 we know the beast holistically as it appears in Revelation chapter 17 verse 3 has a a it's a dual entendre it has a dual it has a parallel uh, depiction and and uh, interpretation. It's not only the Antichrist, but it's the fullness of it's the Antichrist numbers as the spirit of Antichrist dwells within the image to the beast and resides in its full operational capacity. If that makes sense to you guys. So that it should make sense. It should make perfect sense. So the beast is, when the Bible references the beast, the Bible first and foremost is speaking about Satan. It's saying this is Satan and this is the Antichrist. And this is the power that's, that's operating within what's enumerated within the passage within Re Revelation chapter 17, verse 3. So let's keep going. The signification or vision given to the Apostle John in Revelation chapter 17, verse 3 and 4, enumerates the image to the beast's presence in the fullness of its numbers and operational capacity as 
the names of blasphemy, and it depicts the desire for sexual and monetary control of all flesh as the motive for the image to the beast to commit summary executions and kill the souls of all flesh it captivates in service to hell and death. Revelation chapter 13 verse 6 through 8, Matthew chapter 12 verse 43 through 45, Revelation chapter 18 verse 1 and 2, and of course Revelation chapter 20 verse 11 through 15, the great the great white throne judgment. So let's read this again. The signification or vision given to the Apostle John in Revelation chapter 17 verse 3 and 4 enumerates the image to the beast presence in the fullness of its numbers and operational capacity as the names of blasphemy and depicts the desire for sexual and monetary control of all flesh as the motive for the image to the beast to commit summary executions and kill the souls of all flesh it captivates in service to hell and death. So that's pretty straightforward right there. The, the image to the beast is the ambassador bearing the seal of Satan. The image to the beast is the, the civil authority that has the spirit of Antichrist. It is the 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 forerunner of the mark of the beast. It's the first people on earth that appear with the mark of the beast that gather together all the children of Satan unto Satan as in suspended animation, dead souls in the kingdom of hell. Uh, a living animated petition demanding the appearance of Antichrist. Revelation chapter 13 verses 15 through, excuse me, 15, yeah, 15 through 18. So that's when, in Revelation chapter 17, 3, first we have, and I saw a woman sit upon a scarlet colored beast. We have the appearance of Antichrist. This is the appearance of Antichrist, but first and foremost, he's spiritual. We know it's, it's a spiritual manifestation first and foremost because it appears first and foremost with the mark of the beast that resides within the image of the beast. In the next line of the passage, um, it says, And I saw a woman sin upon her scholar full of the beast, full of names of blasphemy. And this is, the, this is the inhabitation of the image of the beast of all the people that reside in civil capacity and, and enforce the mark of the beast upon the entire world as the ambassador bearing the seal of Satan. So the first appearing in Revelation 17, 3, we have the woman sitting upon a scarlet colored beast. And this is Antichrist. This is Antichrist. And I, I would tend to believe first, for right now, for us today, it's the spirit of Antichrist. It's not in its full operational capacity because we know Revelation chapter 13, verses 15 through 17 has not appeared in, in, in our country, in the United States, in Democratic Union in its full operational capacity as it is enumerated in Revelation chapter 13 verses 15 through 17. So right now when I read this, it's still a little bit fuzzy. So I, when, when I go over this passage and I read this every single day, I know that there's more information in it for me, laid up for me as, as a child of God, seeking the wisdom and the glory of God through the manifestation of Jesus Christ, because it's still a little bit fuzzy in my mind. I know that there's more information to be gleaned in this passage because it, it is not seated rock solid firmly in my thinking. There's still a little bit of fuzziness about what's going on there in this passage. And that's that's the manifestation of God in there. And that's, that's you know, you can't force anything. You know, you can't force. The Bible says that people will rest from God things from the scriptures that aren't too unto their own destruction. We have to wait on God to give us the knowledge and uh, the glory that's contained, the silver and gold that's contained under the surface of these passages. And that's why we read them day in and day out, and we, we rely on the presence and the glory and the love of God to reveal to us the truths and sacred scriptures so we can give these to other people. And they you, that's why I do this, guys, so you guys, you can lay these truths. You can put these truths in your own hearts. You can put on your spiritual or armor right now and you can defend your homes, your families, and your children from the image of the beast as the image of the beast now today has sold its soul to Satan. The image of the beast appears within, contained within the beast as the names of blasphemy, I personally believe. And that 
has appeared right now today. Revelation chapter 13, verse 15 has appeared. The image of the beast, everybody knows, is right now pouring out the spirit of Antichrist and soliciting the worship of death and summoning the children of Satan into the kingdom of hell in their operational capacity. He's doing it right now, today. I believe everybody's painfully unaware of that, so let's keep going. Revelation chapter 13, verses 15 through 17, specifically details the image to the beast as the only earthen vessel that speaks the message of Satan. I cannot stress this to you guys enough. Revelation 13, verses 15 through 17, specifically details the image to the beast as the only earthen vessel that, that speaks the the message of Satan to the world demanding obedience to the spirit of Antichrist, demanding the worship of death and the fulfillment of its own personal fleshly lusts and desires. John chapter 8 verse 44, Revelation chapter 13 verses 15 through 17. Wait, 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 I'm ahead of myself. John chapter 8, verse 44. You are of your father the devil, and the less your father you will do. You are a murderer to fulfill all your lusts. When you speak of a lie, you speak of your father because you are a liar and you are speaking the things that you enjoy to fulfill your sexual and monetary control on pain of death within the population. And that's why the image of the beast is pouring out the spirit of Antichrist today and making everybody drink poison disguised as lemonade preparing them to receive a fraudulent manifestation of righteousness to prepare the world of harvest to kill your soul you'll bow down with the mark of the beast in your soul you'll be dead when antichrist appears spiritually and then you'll be naturally dead of course by the manifest presence of jesus christ at the second advent 2 thessalonians 2 chapter 8 and then that wicked shall be revealed whom the lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth and shall destroyed with the brightness of his coming so let me read this again revelation chapter 13 verses 15 through 17 specifically details the image to the beast as the only earthen vessel that speaks the message of satan to the world demanding obedience to the spirit of antichrist demanding the worship of death and the fulfillment of its own personal fleshly lusts and desires john chapter 8 verse 44 which i just reiterated to you guys. Revelation chapter 13 verses 15 through 17 also specifically details the image to the beast as the only enforcement of the mark of the beast and the only causality for the mark of the beast as by its own desire for sexual and monetary for sexual and monetary control it forces the creature upon pain of death into satanic captivity. Revelation chapter 13 verse 3 and 4. And I saw one of his heads as it was wounded to death, and his deadly wound was healed, and all the world wondered after the beast. And they worshipped the dragon, which gave power unto the beast, and they worshipped the beast, saying, Who is like unto the beast? Who is able to make war with him? And there's another manifestation, the image of the beast and its own desires to steal of harvest, of monetary and, and of a sexual nature to make the creature serve in its sexual capacity and to produce wealth specifically for the image to the beast in a singular manifestation the Bible explicates right here in Revelation chapter 13 verses 4 that the image to the beast is the causality of the war that ends with finality, the war between Christ and Satan, and it forces, and forces all flesh on pain of death into the kingdom of hell. Because we know, as 1 Corinthians 15, 50 says, flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. You've got to see, just as Revelation chapter 17, 3 and 4, it's depicted. It's a word picture. You have to take it on faith and you have to receive the glory and the presence of God contained therein and the wisdom of God by 
faith. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence, evidence of things not seen. It's cognizance of God's goodness and presence. And those that do not love God do not obey the gospel of Jesus Christ, and they do not obey the commandments of God, and therefore they don't transform spiritually. You know, they don't transform in the king. Flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, Jesus Christ himself said in uh, Luke chapter 17, I, verse, I believe verse 20 and 21, the kingdom of, God, of heaven comes not with observation, for behold, the kingdom of God is within you. So you have to see things with spiritual eyes, you have to be born again, and you have to be sealed by the Holy Spirit of grace to escape the, your flesh, the desires of the flesh, your carnality, and to appear righteous before and sealed with the glory of God on, on, on the final day. And that's the manifestation of the flesh. They're, they're, they're people that, that, trend, that regress back into complete darkness and Isaiah chapter 8 verse 20 through 22 and lack of cognizance of God's goodness and presence and that's why the Bible depicts their captivity as being driven into darkness. John 8 12, I'm the light of the world, he that followeth me shall not walk in darkness but shall have the light of life. Let's keep going. The only protection a soul can enjoy from satanic criminal psychopathology is by willfully positioning oneself in close proximity to the presence of Holy Father God. Psalm 91, chapter 91, verses 1 through 6 explicates this. No, it, it, it details this, excuse me. Psalm 91, verses 1 through 6 details this. No, explicates, Psalm 91, 1 through 6, excuse me, explicates this in Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6 and 7, and Romans chapter 7, verses 12 through 14, confirms this fact. The only protection a soul can enjoy from satanic criminal psychopathology is by willfully positioning oneself in close proximity to the presence of Holy Father God. Without the sprout, without, excuse me, without the sprout, without the fruit of the spirit of the spirit, no democracy, democratic process, or an enforcement of constitutional protections can be fulfilled within our nations. Galatians chapter 5 verses 22 and 23, Isaiah chapter 61 verses 1 through 3, and Revelation chapter 3 verse 20. So, the Bible makes it very clear that the wicked people of this earth that do not recognize chastisement by Holy Father God and will not yield in in you know, in in homage and in in respect to Holy Father God as the Creator, Sovereign Source, and Sustainer of all creation, they're just going further and further into hatred of other people and themselves and of God. And eventually, during the seven last plagues, they are cursing God, unfortunately, because they're in so much pain that's being inflicted upon their flesh. And that's what the image to the beast is trying to do. The image to the beast is inflicting. As it pours out the spirit of Antichrist, Romans chapter 3, verse 13, which is the spiritual phenomenon that occurs when you are being assaulted spiritually, face-to-face, -face, in a direct manifestation, and... Uh, uh, and spiritually uh, in a passive manifestation when you're being tortured and you're being uh, uh, punished and you're uh, the Bible what does it call it in, by, in Revelation I think Revelation 9 it's called torments and that's what the torments are for it's to it's to make the weeds grow so the people that don't love God it expedites them their their exit from his presence it's very sad we you know we're all suffering physical pain but you're going to do that anyway in this life you're everybody's going to suffer i mean you can walk down the road and get hit by a car you know and but the thing is what's happening now is the image of the beast is pouring out the spirit of antichrist it's telling everybody what it's doing and it's making people more hateful and hatred it's growing the weeds for a satanic harvest until it can fulfill its missions and its purpose which is to glorify Satan as his master.
And that's what the image of the beast is there for. for the, the beast, the first the beast appears, that's Satan. And that right now, the beast that appears, and I saw a woman sit upon her scholar color beast, that's the spirit of Antichrist. It's not the appearing yet because he hasn't appeared. He won't appear until the ambassador bearing the seal of Satan, the image of the beast, has perfected security and his government and its operational capacity within its soul as the seal of Satan. It won't appear. The Antichrist will absolutely, Revelation 13, 15 through 18 makes that absolutely crystal clear. The, the Antichrist will not appear until all his children are marked with the mark of the beast and he knows that he's secure and he's safe. And that's by the judgment of Holy Father God, that's the way this, this is going to occur. So just you guys keep in mind that, that the only protection a soul can enjoy from satanic criminal psychopathology is by willfully positioning oneself in close proximity to the presence of Holy Father God. Read these passages, meditate upon them, yield to God, recognize that you're a sinner and the wages of sin is death for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God and that you need a savior and that you, nobody's going to live forever You know, we, because we're being punished by a bunch of people that want, by the image of the beast, a bunch of people right now that want sexual and monetary control on pain of death over all the children of God in our nation because we're being punished by them and we're being tortured and we're being tormented. That's not an excuse to hate your creator. And the, on, the only way you're going to get out of these torments and it won't increase upon you is by the gospel and the glory and the grace of Jesus Christ. Jeffrey Leone, if you're edified by this program, please hit the like button, subscribe to this channel, receive notification of future installments. And remember, you can come to the throne room of God today and receive your healing directly if you are abiding in mercy and grace as manifested by Matthew chapter 13, verses 10 through 15. Thank you.